Good evening and welcome to our special service for Ascension Day. I'm Stuart and I'm Faith and it's really good to welcome you here. here. We're from St Peter's but of course the real joy of this service is that we're gathered together from across three parishes so also welcome to people from St Barnabas and from St Mary's. It's really good to worship together. And throughout the service you will see people from all three churches taking part. It was only 40 days ago that we were celebrating Easter Sunday and since then we've been remembering particularly Christ's triumph over death and of course many times between Easter and Ascension Jesus met with his disciples and at Ascension we we remember with thanks Jesus ascending back to his father but also begin to look forward to Pentecost and the coming of the Holy Spirit. But before we sing our first song, Faith's going to lead us in a short prayer. Father God, we come to you this evening and just want to worship you. So thank you for all that you did that first Easter. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins and the eternal life that you promise us. And as we move from the season of Easter to that of Pentecost, we pray that you will set our hearts aflame with love for you. Amen. Amen. Oh, your resurrection power burns like 
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. That's chapter 24, verse 44 to the end. Glory to you, O Lord. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written, The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The reading is from Acts, chapter 1, verses 1 to 11. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father has promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand there looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't know about you, but for me, Ascension Day has always been something of a poor relation when it comes to the major festivals of the church. Maybe you didn't even know it was a major festival of the church. Certainly I didn't until a few years ago. And as we go through this passage together, I'd like to just draw our attention to a few things, which I think highlight just how important this story is for us, especially today. So if you've got a Bible or a Bible app available to you, please do turn to Acts and let's look at this story together. In the beginning of these verses in Acts chapter 1, Luke talks to Theophilus about what he's now doing. In his first book, he says he wrote all about Jesus and what he began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up into heaven and how he gave these instructions to the apostles about the Holy Spirit. We see here in these verses, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus, in verse 9, is taken up 
into a cloud. The cloud being the symbol of God's presence. God gives Jesus his embrace as the disciples watch him disappear from their sight. And Jesus promises to the disciples the gift of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. We see he here very clearly God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit together in perfect unison. We see the authority of Jesus and the gift of his blessing upon the disciples. To know that Jesus is Lord reminds us that we needn't fear in any situation. With the triune God on our side, there is nothing that is beyond his capacity to deal with. So, Jesus has begun his ministry. But this book of Acts is to carry on the story. This is a moment of transition, of change. A moment when things move from one way to another way. Many of us have been experiencing a period of challenge and change over the last few months. And one of the things that we need to remember whenever we're faced with challenges or changes is that Jesus is Lord. He is ascended into heaven and he sits at the right hand of God the Father interceding for us. We need never fear or doubt because Jesus is Lord. So what happens next? The disciples are told to wait because something new is going to happen. Previously Jesus has been with them physically but now he will send another. The promised Holy Spirit will baptise them. They're worried about what the next steps are. Lord at this time are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? The disciples were too busy looking back back to the way things had been. I'm sure for many a football fan they can think of the glory days of their football club. That time when they were brilliant. They had the best players. I'm a Crystal Palace supporter. We never had that happen. But many people can point backwards and with rose-tinted glasses look at the good times. The times when God was doing things. But Jesus doesn't call us to look back. He doesn't want to do the same thing again. He didn't want to restore the kingdom to Israel in the way the disciples expected him to. No, instead he wanted to do a new thing. Look, don't worry, says Jesus. You don't need to know about the times or the dates. That's God's business, not yours. But you need to know this. When the Holy Spirit comes on you, you will have power to be my witnesses. The witness of all that I've done. You will be my hands and my feet in this world. Often, especially at the moment, we may wonder what the future holds. We may worry about what our next steps may be. We may be afraid of what will happen at the end of lockdown. Will things go back to the way they were? No. They almost certainly won't. But that doesn't mean we need to fear. Jesus has called us to be witnesses to him. But he doesn't call us to do it without giving us the Holy Spirit to help us. As we look ahead to Pentecost and the gift of the Holy Spirit, we can be assured that whatever it is God's calling us to, he will give us the gifts and the power to do it. However it is he's calling us to show him forth, he will give us all that we need 
to fulfill our task. The disciples were also focused in the wrong place. We see them at the end looking in the wrong place for Jesus, looking up to the sky, when instead they should be looking and waiting for the Holy Spirit to come amongst them. But we also see them looking to Israel, the kingdom of old, when Jesus has a much bigger plan. Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria, and the very ends of the earth. I wonder if sometimes we're not all guilty of only being able to imagine what God has done, uh, what God can do, based on what God has done. Our God is able to do infinitely more than we can even ask or imagine. Who would have thought that eleven ragtag men could shake the world and take this message to the very ends of the earth? Who would have thought that two thousand years later we'd still be reading their stories? Only God could imagine a plan like that. So as we look to the future, we needn't fear. But we need to have a big imagination. We need to look at the world around us with fresh eyes and see things in God's way. Jesus is Lord. Jesus tells us we need not fear. We need not worry about tomorrow because he will give us all that we need in the power of the Holy Spirit. And he calls us to lift our eyes from the four walls around us. Many of us may be feeling trapped in one way, shape or form at the moment. Jesus longs to set us free, not necessarily in a physical way, but to help us to lift our eyes beyond ourselves and our current situation, and to help us to take him to the ends of the earth. This Ascension Day, as we think of our risen and ascended Lord, as we recognise him as King of all, as we give thanks for the Holy Spirit at work within us, and as we lift our eyes afresh, may we see him, not in the sky, but all around us, as we reach out as his hands and feet, and tell the world that Jesus is Lord. May you know his peace and his presence this day and always. Amen.
as we reflect on what Leris has shared with us of our risen and ascended Lord, we proclaim our faith in him. You are not only risen and alive, you are Lord. This, your ascension, your ascendancy over the whole universe. You stand over and above all that is best in life as its source. You stand above all that is worst as the ultimate victor. You stand above all powers and authorities as judge. You stand above all failure and weakness and sin as forgiveness and love. You alone are worthy of total allegiance, total commitment. You are Lord, my Lord and my God. And as we continue in an attitude of prayer before our intercessions, the collect for today. Risen Christ, you have raised our human nature to the throne of heaven. Help us to seek you and to serve you, that we may join you at the Father's side, where you reign with the Spirit in glory, now and for ever. Amen. We now come to our time of prayer, so let us pray. The Collect for Thy Kingdom Come Almighty God, your Ascended Son has sent us into the world to preach the good news of your Kingdom. Inspire us with your Spirit and fill our hearts with the fire of your love that all who hear your word may be drawn to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we celebrate the end of Easter, Jesus' death, burial and resurrection completed. We celebrate the atonement, the penalty paid for everything we've done that did not bring you honour and glory. Now, Lord Jesus, we celebrate your ascension, you, the incarnate God, God made man, now takes manhood back into the Godhead. We cannot comprehend, but we can and do give you our worship and praise. Thank you for all you have accomplished. Thank you for all that you are. We remember your first disciples waiting and praying for the fulfilment of your promise for the Holy Spirit to come. We wait for him too. Holy Spirit, come afresh on each one of us as we wait on you, as we pray to you and as we worship you. Enable us to live lives worthy of you and that bring you glory. Enable us to be clear and effective witnesses to who you are and all that you have done. May thy kingdom come in our lives, Lord. Holy Spirit, come to our land. May your sweetness and power transform hearts and minds within our nation. Convict us all of sin, of righteousness and of judgment, and reveal Jesus as Lord and Saviour. Do this, Lord, by your sovereign power and by your power at work in us. Thy kingdom come in our nation, Lord. Lord, we think of friends and family who do not know you. In a short period of quiet, we bring the names of five people dear to us before you, people who don't yet know you. Holy Spirit, please work in their lives. Reveal to them their need of forgiveness and reveal to them all that Jesus has done. May thy kingdom come in them too, Lord. Father, Son and Spirit, as we reflect on all you have done for us, the completeness of your work, we give you our thanks and praise and adoration. In anticipation, we pray, 
Holy Spirit, come. Thy kingdom come. Let us join together in the prayer Jesus taught us to say. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
us for this service of worship this evening. We hope that you felt God drawing near to you. And as we leave, may the Spirit who set the church on fire upon the day of Pentecost bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all and remain with us now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as we wait for that promised spirit, let us go out in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good night.